The Friday the 13th franchise, which is hard to say, began life as a fairly transparent ripoff of Halloween, and hell, tis the season, why not look at some obscure facts about the rage himself, Johnny Hockey Mask. There are lots of weird facts about Jason that we already know. He wasn't actually meant to be the franchise main player, he wasn't in the first film, he didn't get his famous mask until the third film, spending the second with a potato sack on his head. We all know those, but how about these? Sharpen up your machete, it's Jasoning time. Mm. I'm Adam from WhatCulture.com and here are 10 things you didn't know about Jason Voorhees. Number 10, he was originally going to be called Josh. Yep, Josh. You know, the name that a letterman jack in human form would have. Apparently he was going to be called Josh and the film itself would have been called Long Night at Camp Blood. Apparently the writer Victor Miller thought Josh was too nice a name and chose to use the name of a bully at his school. Makes sense, Freddy vs. Josh sounds like an awful Nickelodeon sitcom. Number 9. His name is Dutch According to House of Names, the name Voorhees was first found in Holland, where the name became noted for its many branches in the region, each house acquiring a status and influence which was envied by the princes of the region. It's actually an anglicised form of Van Voorhees before he's, he's being a small Dutch village of about 50 people. Interesting, no? Wait, please come back, I promise there'll be no more Dutch facts in this video. Another Voorhees of note, Daniel S. Voorhees, who confessed to the murder of Elizabeth Short, the so-called Black Dahlia case in 1947. It's a killer's name, apparently. Number 8. He's fought Leatherface and Ash In 1995, Topps Comics published Jason vs. Leatherface, beating the Freddy vs. Jason movie by nearly 10 years. The comic doesn't really fit the timeline of either franchise. The meeting of the two titans lacks any credibility. Jason boards a train to Texas for some reason, and there's no clear winner after their climactic confrontation. Jason is knocked out, allowing Leatherface to escape. Boo. Speaking of Freddy vs. Jason, an original treatment for that film, written by Jeff Katz, formed the basis for Freddy vs. Jason vs. Ash, a six-issue comic published in 2007. In that comic, Jason's former victims are resurrected by Freddy as Deadites, and an epic battle begins before Ash traps Jason beneath Crystal Lake and sends Freddy to the Deadite world. And that is the Freddy vs. Jason movie we should have got. Number 7. Jason the 13. I like it when things line up like this. So it turns out that including the flashbacks of him as a child, 13 people have played Jason. You know, because Friday the 13th, you get it, you get it. Kane Hodder is the man who's played him the most time, with four appearances from films 7 to 10, but apart from him, there's been a different Jason for every single film. Why? Because bringing back an actor for a sequel means you have to pay them more, and after all, Jason's behind a mask. Hollywood, you bastard. Number 6. He almost had his mask nicked During the filming of Friday the 13th Part 8, Jason Takes Manhattan, which remember could have been called Josh Takes Manhattan, apparently one absolute scamp of a fan tried to yoink the infamous hockey mask during filming. I mean, sure, mess with Jason, that sounds like a ripper of a plan. Massive Kane Hodder was playing Jason at the time, and he was sitting on a bench between takes, mask off, and a bystander grabbed it and ran. In Hodder's words, I punched him in the side of the head, and he went down so hard he hit his head on the curb. I mean, that makes sense. He's Jason. Number 5. He's relentlessly animated In The Simpsons, Jason appears in the credits of the Treehouse of Horror 9 episode, sitting on the couch with Freddy Krueger and wondering where the family are after they've died on the way home. He also turns up in South Park's Imagination Land episode, as do Pinhead, Freddy, and Strawberry Shortcake. When Shortcake's eyeball is removed, Jason calls it Super Hardcore. Jason also appears in several Robot Chicken episodes, most notably on the horror movie Big Brother, alongside Michael Myers, Pinhead, Leatherface, Freddy, and Ghostface. In the episode Operation Rich in Spirit, Jason's murders are being investigated by the Scooby-Doo gang, which turns out to be ironic because the movie Scooby-Doo Camp Scare is a knowing tribute to the Friday the 13th franchise. Oh, it's so hard to say. Number 4. Jason's father was supposed to appear in Jason Lives. For the ending of Friday the 13th Part 6, Jason Lives, director Tom McLaughlin wanted Elias Voorhees to appear at the Eternal Peace Cemetery, staring mutely at his son's grave and ignoring the kindly caretaker who tries to make small talk. The scene was supposed to end with Elias clenching his fists with rage while Jason emerges from Crystal Lake, but the studio changed it for the final cut. The idea remains in the Part 6 novelization, though it does contradict what little we know of Elias, most of which comes from Friday the 13th Pamela's Tale, a two-issue comic. In this comic, Elias is portrayed as an alcoholic who never stopped beating his wife, even after learning she was pregnant with Jason. Having suffered enough, Pamela killed her husband with an axe, and after blowing up their trailer, cut him into itty-bitty pieces. She collects the body parts in garbage bags, and she dumps them in Crystal Lake, where she later found work at the summer camp. Lovely story. Number 3. He won a Lifetime Achievement Award At the 1992 MTV Movie Awards, which are the Oscars with attitude, I guess, Keanu Reeves won Most Desirable Male for Point Break. 
that makes sense. But that wasn't the biggest news. The biggest news was Jason got his own little nod, a Lifetime Achievement Award. Not bad, considering he hadn't been seen on screen since 1988. Following a montage of Jason's greatest hits set to Nothing Compares to You and My Way, of course, Jason took to the stage wearing, for the first time in his career, a tuxedo. Hollywood, the future is ours, he said, before being unmasked as actor John Lovitz. How dare you do that to Jason? Number two, the first Jason is in a band called First Jason. Ari Lehrman, Lehman, Lerman, found fame playing Jason in part one, so when he decided to move into horror punk, as you want to do, he was perfectly entitled to call his band First Jason. And if you didn't know that First Jason was specifically for horror fans, then the titles of their songs, which include Victim, You Better Run, and Machete Is My Friend, ought to tip you off. It sounds like lovely music, perfect soundtrack to a picnic, or a nice game of Kaplunk. Other musicians who've made reference to Jason include Eminem, whose tracks Amityville and Off the Wall also sample Harry Manfredini's score. You can also find references to the big guy in tracks by fellow rappers Dr. Dre, LL Cool J, Tupac Shakur, and Insane Clown Posse. I listen to all of those artists, they're all my favorite ones. And number one, he's the king of killers. In 2005, over 1,100 Americans responded to a survey by California State University exploring choices for a favorite movie monster. Of the 10 monsters used in the survey, which also included Chucky, Godzilla, Dracula, and Hannibal Lecter, Jason scored the highest in each category that involved killing variables. In the snappily titled The Psychological Appeal of Your Favorite Movie Monsters, the authors explain the reasoning. He's an unstoppable killing machine. His cornucopic feats of slicing and dicing a seemingly endless number of adolescents and the occasional adult is impressive to his fans. The survey concludes, considering that his body count does not compare with those of Godzilla or the creature from Alien, it is an impressive accomplishment to be effectively anointed the king of killers. Or to translate, Jason's fans are a scarily enthusiastic bunch of weirdos. And that's our list. Did we miss any out? Tell us about it in the comments. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter here. I'm Adam from WhatCulture.com and I'll see you soon.